together. Don't leave the knees up. Jab, chin up, sit up tall. Stay together. Everyone knows about the exporting prowess of the multinational firms such as Boeing, General Motors, and Procter & Gamble and the like. But small firms with less than 500 employees account for about 30% of all U.S. exports. The story of JL Design is representative of this hugely important sector, an engine of growth for international commerce. Jolene Esparza and Ken Mills started their business some 10 years ago in Orange County, California. Orange County is often referred to as Velcro Valley because of the concentration of sports-related apparel manufacturers in the region. They share an office as well as the reins of the business. Ken as vice president focuses more on operations, and Jolene as president more on marketing. But ultimately, the teamwork they learned in sports manifests itself in a smooth management style. My wife took up rowing as uh, a means to recuperate from injuries to her shoulders uh, as a volleyball player and started rowing with the rowing team and just fell in love. She never went back to volleyball. After university she tried club rowing. She did well there and then got invited to the national team selection camp and at the national team level she has won a silver medal at the world championships and then after that it was just part of our life. I'd been sewing all my life uh, from a kid, and when I was a rower, I started to make things for myself because there was nothing comfortable. No one was making athletic products for women at all. That didn't start until mid to late 80s, and so we pretty much had to wear whatever we could find, and it was awful. So I started making things for myself, and my teammates started noticing, so I'd make things for them. And I started to think of it as a way to support myself in my rowing career because I had very little money. And this was a skill I had, and so I started to make products. It went very slowly for about 10 years. It wasn't until 1993 that both of us went full-time and tried to make a full living from this business. And it was the best decision we could have made. Our business is based in Orange County, California, and, and this is a strong area for the clothing industry. But it's been good for us because it's, it's got a strong support base. We've got all of our uh, fabric suppliers have offices in this area, uh, machine suppliers and maintenance support groups are all here. That may not be this way much longer because the apparel industry is moving to Asia primarily. Rowers row in the spring. That's the main season for rowing. There's also a shorter rowing season that's in the fall. It's based on school schedules. There is no rowing done during the summer that is really important to us. Our international seasons are a bit different because their seasons don't line up directly with our seasons. So when we get orders from overseas, it tends to fill our slow season. We've always had a policy here that we don't lay off our employees, even though we're seasonal. When we go to the slow seasons, we've decided to work on pre-production or planning our products for a busy season. We've supplied the U.S. national team on and off for 10 years. We're the official supplier to the British national team, which is probably the most uh, influential and visible rowing team in, in the world. And as of right now, we handle, I, I believe, about 10 national teams. So for us as athletes, that is what we consider success. The bottom line profit is important, but those successes make us happiest. Right now, we're working on a project for Adidas Great Britain, and we just sent off our final samples for approval. And you'll see the uh, British Olympic team in JL made clothing with Adidas logos. In producing our products for Adidas and Nike and the others, we've come up with arrangements where they allow us to leave our label on the inside and the logoing for the company is on the outside. After Great Britain, our newest markets are Germany, Holland, or Netherlands, and Belgium. The German market is probably larger than the American market. In Germany, there are rowing clubs that are supported by major companies. Uh, we've got a, an arrangement with the best rower in the world. His name's Marcel Hocker, 
and he is a big star in Germany, and he loves our clothing, and he's running around showing it off to everyone he can. Rowing is a sport uh, requires, we think, specific clothing. It, it's not something you just buy off the rack at the local department store. Rowing requires a lot of body movement. It's a whole body activity. We try and keep the athletes, first of all, comfortable from the elements. So they're, if they are getting wet, it's not getting down to their skin. If it is cold outside, we try and keep their important body areas warm. Rowing is very intensive on the lower back and upper back. We want to minimize injury. And this is one thing coaches love us for. All, all of our products are geared towards not only looking good, but protecting the athlete and keeping them healthy. Our most important garment is what's called a unisuit. It's a one-piece rowing garment. And that's what they need to row in when they race. When we went into the British market and Europe, one of the first things that we provided and, and tried to promote was the fact that you don't need to wait eight to 10 weeks. You can get something that you want, that you need, and you can have it in four weeks. And it wasn't a stretch for us. That had to include the shipping time, the time to get it through customs, and the time to get it to their door. So they were amazed. We pretty much revolutionized the expectations of our customers over there. And as a result, I believe we improved our competitors a lot. They had to answer to us. Market research for jail design is really based in going to races. We get to talk to athletes, we get to talk to coaches, national team coaches. This allows us also to see the athletes take their garments out on the water. We can see what they're choosing to train in because there's usually training outings at races and we also get to see what they're using in the races. We travel to events all around the world to promote our product, and it's our best marketing tool. In our small world, rowers don't have a mall they can go to and get their clothing. They have to buy it directly from the manufacturers in most cases. So what we do is we bring ourselves to them. We take our dog and pony show and go set up where they're going to be doing their event, and those are anything from dual races between colleges sometimes to international races that attract hundreds of thousands of athletes and people. And when we decided that we wanted to expand in Europe, we decided the best way to do it was to get into the hands of the top athletes. And so we gave it to our top athletes and said to trade it away because the tradition in rowing is to trade your clothing. Having been involved very deeply in everything that rowing did and does, makes us feel very qualified and we hire rowers. We, tr we have athletes. We put out the word to coaches when we're looking for sales staff and management staff that we want athletes. And that's important not only in the way that we develop our products but in communicating with our customers at all levels. One of the issues in moving to an international market is control of not only the marketing but how our reps handle our product, how they market it, how they present us. Because we've held our image very close to our heart. When we choose people to present our logo or our product, whether it's at an event or as a representative, they're our face. And our customer needs to see that we are serious about what we do, that we enjoy our work, that we are proud of our product, Marketing our products in Europe has been a, a bit of a challenge because we don't completely understand the buying habits. We've definitely learned a lot and we've gotten a lot better. In Germany, the clubs are very long established institutions of anywhere from 800 people sometimes and it's very social. But they also have a board of directors that takes a very long time to make any decision and they might have relationships with other vendors, so it takes a long time to change anything in a program like this. So this rep, he had a system by which he presented bids, and that was so different for us. But it was obvious that this is the way that the institutions in Germany needed to be approached. In a small business, the owners wear all the hats, and as you grow, you 
little by little take those hats off and pass them to more skilled uh, professionals or people within your organizations who have been trained. And it's hard to give those hats away, but it's necessary. Uh, one of the hats that I retain is the artwork and advertising and website part of the work that goes on here. In terms of the website, I work directly with my website designer, Harvest Moon Studio, and we go back and forth with design concepts because our products are changing all the time and updating all the time. And since it is the most current way for our customers to see what's happening, we want them to know the day that it's ready. Where initially we thought we'd be selling a lot of things overseas, we decided instead that we wanted to support our reps. So what we do is we provide our website as a tool, information tool, so a customer going online can go to our site, find all the information about fabrics, sizing, products, and then purchase through our rep there. So even though I believe our site helps our international sales, our reps do the sales. We've created a database information system that allows our reps to send their orders in online to us and we actually are able to print out our production sheets directly online. So our sales reps will go online, create the garments in full color, send them to us, we download them here online, print out our production sheets and it goes straight into production. This is a, a more seamless communication system. We tend to hold the top of the line. We have designed every product to meet the needs of the rowers. We do not design our products in the accounting office. In terms of moving to markets overseas, when you look at the dollar currency value fluctuation, it makes our products pretty expensive in some countries. I wouldn't say we've lowered our prices there, but we've had to adjust our American dollar price when it goes overseas so that duties, shipping costs can all be factored in and the customer isn't shocked and running to the nearest other company. Shipping overseas for us has become fairly easy. We use one company who, who uh, has a lot of experience shipping into Europe especially, and we get our, our orders into Great Britain and uh, Holland, Denmark, Belgium in two days. You know, it's one day to New York. I can have these orders in those countries in two days. We have more trouble in some other countries. Germany seems to have a big wall put up. It's very difficult to get our orders in there in a timely way. And believe it or not, Canada is our biggest problem. Uh, Canadian Customs wants to open boxes and check everything, and, and it's, it's just a nightmare. In Europe, we discovered that they logo everything everywhere. And it's not just a club logo. It'll be the club, their sponsor, the athlete's name on the front, his mother's name on the back. And we can have an, an order for shirts come across that has four logos on it. We haven't figured out whether it's tradition to have it everywhere or if it's driven by the fact that in Europe, rowing is more visible. It's not as much of a uh, fringe sport as it is here. And so sponsors believe that their logo being seen on a rower is worth their sponsorship money. There are many cultural differences in clothing, in the product. For many years, rowing in the United States was boring. Navy, black, royal, red, and white, and that was it. When we went to Europe, there was not only the fantastic pastels that men would wear, there were flowers, there were designs, crisscrosses all over the place, which makes production a real headache, but it introduced into our line much more exciting designs and colors and made me bolder in pushing these colors and these designs to the Americans. And over the last, I think, five years, it's gone from uh, the teams ordering solid navy to the teams ordering a suit that has swirls and stripes that go all the way to the body, uh, logos everywhere. It's been a real influx of, of uh, flash and design, and I love it. International business is hard work, so perhaps it's not surprising that less than 5% of small firms are now exporting. 
But Jolene and Ken believe it pays off in increased sales and profits, more stable operations, and new product ideas. And JL Design's international marketing efforts have not only enriched the owner's bank accounts, but provided steady jobs for their employees. The travel and friendship they've developed in the course of their overseas ventures has also enriched their lives.